What's up YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna look at a couple of free things that you can do to your PC, regardless of its age, to lift the overall performance and usability of your machine. Also, we're gonna look at one quite cheap upgrade that you can do to older PCs that could potentially revitalize that PC and give it a whole new lease on life. Now, these are things that most PC enthusiasts will already know how to do. And if you're one of those enthusiasts and you've got any tips or tricks that I don't talk about today in today's video, sound off in the comments below and we can always look at doing a video about those things in the future. One more thing before we jump in, today's video involves getting down and dirty in your PC's BIOS. And if that sounds intimidating, maybe grab one of your more tech savvy friends to help you out with these steps. Number one. This is one of the most consistently overlooked things for non-enthusiast PC users, and that's your motherboard's BIOS. This may sound scary, but it's relatively easy to upgrade the BIOS on your motherboard. Installing the latest version of your motherboard's BIOS can do things like speed up your system's boot time, increase hardware capability, and improve general performance. So, how do you do this? Well, first things first, you need to find out the manufacturer of your motherboard. This can be done easily by hitting your Windows key and R and typing in MS Info 32 and then hitting enter. This will bring up your system's hardware profile, including your motherboard's make and model with a BIOS version it's running. As you can see, the BIOS version on this test bench hasn't been upgraded since 2017. Looks like our test bench needs some TLC, eh? Now that you're armed with this information, you can head to the support page for your motherboard on the manufacturer's website and see if they have a BIOS update available for your particular motherboard. If it does, you can download the zip file, unzip this zip file, save it to a blank USB stick. This part is really important as you don't want to make the mistake of trying to load the wrong BIOS. Usually this won't be possible, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Now that you have your BIOS upgrade USB ready, you can now restart your PC. Once you see the BIOS flash screen, hit either the delete or F12 key. You can then head over to the tool tab and select easy flash. Bear in mind, this may be worded differently in your motherboard's BIOS, but in general, the layout is pretty similar. Just consult the user manual if you aren't sure. Now, we can go ahead and flash to the latest BIOS. Let it go through the process of installing the new files. This may take a while, so don't touch the power while this is happening. Let it do its thing. Once it's done, the PC will reboot and it may ask you to enter the BIOS again. Just do so and then instantly you can select the save and restart option. It won't affect anything. Now the PC will boot back into Windows and you can check the MS Info 32 again. And as you can see, it has updated to the newest BIOS version. That's it, job done. This is by far the hardest of the three steps, so give yourself a pat on the back. Number two, enable XMP for your RAM. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile, and it is designed to get the best out of your currently installed RAM modules. Bear in mind, not all RAM modules will support XMP, and some older motherboards don't either. And one more note, only DDR4 RAM modules and above have this feature. First things first, we want to reboot our PC and go to BIOS, just like we did when we were flashing the BIOS for our motherboard. The easiest way to see if we have XMB capability is to put our BIOS in easy mode and look for XMP on our main screen. As you can see, our motherboard, which is an older motherboard, can in fact have XMP enabled. So we go ahead and select profile one, accept the prompts that appear and save and exit our BIOS. It's worth noting that sometimes this can cause system instability, but it's incredibly rare. So if you enable XMP or Expo, if you have a AMD5 platform and have stability issues, be sure to disable it by reversing the changes we just made. Number three, clean the clutter. Old machines can have so much clutter on them, generally causing slowness by weighing down your processor with hundreds of unneeded processes. Thankfully, both Windows 10 and Windows 11 have an easy way to check if you have unwanted bloatware clogging up your computer. All you need to do is press Ctrl or Delete and select the task manager on Windows 10. Once in the task manager, you'll see along the top, it'll have a little tab for startup apps. 
The same tab will be along the left side on a Windows 11 machine and look like a little performance gauge. Here you can check all the programs your computer is launching on startup and you can easily enable or disable programs to your heart's content. This can vastly improve the boot speed and general performance of your machine because it's not weighted down with so much excess stuff. Remember people, less is more. And now we come to the last thing on our list, which is the single best hardware improvement you can buy for your PC. And it's actually cheaper than you think. A solid state hard drive, either SATA, which stands for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, or NVMe, Non-Volatile Memory Express, is the ultimate update for an older PC and they are now very affordable. Nearly all computers these days can run a SATA SSD, but not all have the ability to run an NVMe. The difference is how they attach to the motherboard. A SATA SSD attaches to the motherboard using a cable, just like your old mechanical platter hard drive or your spinny disk hard drive, whereas an NVMe needs a specific port on the motherboard to interface with. Checking your motherboard specifications will let you know which one you can use. With that in mind, a fresh installation of Windows or your preferred operating system on a brand new SSD will make your computer feel almost brand new again, increasing its general speed and performance. Shop around too, you may be surprised. As of this recording, I could buy a one terabyte SATA SSD for 80 Australian dollars and a one terabyte M.2 Gen 4 PCIe NVMe drive for 99 Australian dollars, which is a bargain considering the performance you gain. On top of that, both of these drives were from Crucial, a highly regarded player in the PC hardware market. So it's not like these were just cheap knockoffs. So there you go, YouTube. There's a couple of things that you could try for free that could increase the overall performance of your PC. And it doesn't matter if you're playing games, editing videos, or just working on your PC. These things will increase the general performance of your PC and just make it snappier and easier to use. Now, if there's anything that we didn't talk about today that you would like to see, sound off in the comments below. But until next time, have a good day and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.